We're into fuel efficiency of diesel truck engines. We're offering uh, manifolds and turbochargers and the ECM programming. We also make a wiring harness add-on. The main thing that Diesel Freak focuses on is trying to help make the owner-operator more profitable by burning less fuel. We're the last of the cowboys to get the F gone, boys. Eighteen wheels on the concrete, it's a slow and dying breed. Rolling like Jesse James, a modern day outlaw game. If you're out here riding with me, come on back and make some noise. We're the last of the cowboys. So it's a Sunday after the Mid-America Trucking Show, and uh, we're headed here on 65 South. There's a beautiful looking black Pete there behind me. Who do I have the pleasure of talking to? This is uh, Colton Chase from Chase Truck, and then uh, the truck to the American Outlaw. Well, 10 4 it's a great looking truck. I'd love to know, uh, myself and all the others that are watching this, uh, we'd love to, to know a little bit more about it. And, uh, give us the all, all the details on it. Spare none. Uh, well, it's a 2002 uh, Pete 379, uh, 280 wheel base, got 264 rear end, uh, C15 chat with about uh, 7 to 750 horse, uh, even 418 speed. Uh, I've owned the truck for about, oh, it'll be nine years in hand that I've owned the truck, and uh, we just Wow, you're the first person to say that they're done with their truck. You know, some folks will say, oh, well, there's always something to do with it, or always something to add or change and whatnot. Your history, where are you from? And tell me what brought you into the world of trucking. Oh, uh, well, I'm from the uh, far southwest corner of Kansas, down there about uh, 20 miles east of Liberal on Highway 54. Uh, my dad drove a truck way back, you know, before I was born. Uh, they all, uh, him and mom all flatbed in quite a few places around and everything. And I was never, you know, around when they was driving truck, but you know, just dad, you know, telling stories and everything. And, just kind of always had a fascination with trucks and uh, kind of went from there. I always wanted to be around them and then, uh, you know, Chrome Shop Mafia out there, you know, took my truck show and kind of got hooked on that and then decided that uh, my trucking career was going to be filled with a lot of uh, expense while we was, uh, you know, working on a truck. I figured I couldn't have nothing just plain, so I wanted to fix one up, you know, like them boys did with their trucks. So uh, we did that and, like I said, I just, my brother and I are the only two in our family that drive a truck now, and uh, like I said, we both got uh, 379 Peeps, and uh, they don't uh, do nothing but clean and uh, make them shiny and 
to show them off when we can. That sounds great. Tell me about some of the custom parts that you have uh, on the truck. I'm sure a guy would want to know about uh, what kind of visor you're using and stacks and things like that. So uh, give me the details there. Uh, well, we're running a guy chrome jump bumper, uh, Jones Performance fenders. I uh, got the flip kit on the bumper there from Four States out of Joplin. Uh, twin stick that uh, Cody there at Four States built. Uh, Lincoln chrome stacks. Uh, uh, Jeremy's paint and body shop out of Sterling, Kansas. Did the, did the paint work on it. Uh, we're running a sleeper off of an 06 that uh, Jeremy had there. Uh, badass custom rear fenders. Uh, a lot of parts come from 12 gauge. It's got 12 gauge uh, front visor on it, side visors. Uh, tank straps are uh, parts of 12 gauge. Uh, the breather brackets and straps, even though you can't see when we rent strapless breathers from 12 gauge. Uh, 12 gauge rear light bar. Oh, I'm sure I'm missing all kinds of stuff. It's got uh, a lot of trucks lights on it. Uh, Maxima lights are in there. Uh, like I said, that's a uh, a lot of the big ones have got the 12 gauge step weights on it. So, like I said, we've, uh, we've kind of mixed and matched uh, all the cool stuff. Iowa Customs has been a lot of uh, a lot of parts and products on the interior. Step weights on the step boxes are from Iowa Customs. Uh, they're a real good group of guys out there that do, uh, you know, in Carroll, Iowa, that do a lot of uh, a lot of good work, and uh, I highly recommend all their products. So, I run uh, not everything that they run, but I've got probably over half the stuff in their catalog is uh, in on the interior and uh, love every bit of it. What's it for? It sounds like you got a got a variety pack of products, like you said, uh, quite a variety. So when it comes to certain things on the truck that I've noticed, uh, let's start with the grill. Uh, tell me about that grill insert. Uh, that is actually a uh, Roadworks grill. It's a Python grill that I got there at Four States. Uh, I haven't, uh, I'm not going to say this is the only truck that I've ever seen with it in there, but uh, that is one thing that a lot of people ask about at a truck show, ask if I had, uh, had it custom made or anything like that, and uh, it's not custom made specifically for me, but uh, like I said, it's the Rockwood Python grill is what they call it, and uh, like I said, it's one of the highlight features of the truck that uh, everybody seems to like. The, the other, another highlight feature of the truck is the, the gray paint on it. Uh, paint and body shop out there. The guys in their shop did one heck of a job with it. It's got that marbleized gray paint. And um, they did that with just some essentially saran wrap. Like I said, it's got, uh, they painted the gray on there and then stuck that on there with, on that wet paint and uh, let it get tacky for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and peeled it off and put that design in the, in the paint. And they uh, did a lot of the interior products like that too. The headliner uh, floors have that marble look to them. Uh, the stripe follows of the door panels as well. That's, uh, that's uh, painted on the inside. We shaved the door handles off of it. Uh, we got door toppers and everything that, uh, to get in and out. There's not a not a door handle or a hood latch anywhere on the truck. Like I said, it's, they uh, shaved them all off and we got everything hitting up underneath for that clean, simple look that we, uh, that we were going for. So they did a, did a heck of a job accomplishing that for me. All the lights uh, run underneath the truck. I don't have lights, you know, down the outside of my cowlings there. They're actually on the bottom side, aimed down. Those came from uh, 12 gauge. And uh, like I said, so we just shut the lights off on the truck. They don't even look like they're there until you turn them on. Then we can light them up from bumper to bumper. That's a really cool paint treatment. I really like it a lot. And, you know, when I saw it, I thought perhaps it may have been something else like uh, you know a lot of people they use a vinyl or something or something early like that so I thought maybe it was a vinyl wrap or something but that that's the real deal that's really cool yep, everything uh, on the truck is, uh, is painted on uh, you know, the lettering down the side of, like for the fire extinguisher and uh, the no steps on the back of my on my frame cover there and everything is uh, is painted on the only sticker that we've got on the truck is the uh, the vinyl wrap that's on my uh, name plate there on the on the steps, but everything else is uh, painted on there. Uh, tell me about the bunk, the size of the bunk, and some of the the custom treatments that have been done to it. Uh, well, this truck when it came out of the factory and when I bought it had the 70 inch stand up bunk with the uh, with the extension wings on the back there, and uh, I wanted to go something you know a little bit smaller, a little bit more kind of custom look to it. And uh, so when I was talking to Jeremy there about getting some uh, touch up work and everything done, we. Uh, 
I told him I wanted to change sleepers out on it, and he actually ended up having one in the in the back, you know, behind his shop there that we uh, ended up buying off of him, shaved the wings off the back, and uh, made it look a lot longer, a lot more custom. Uh, then we, uh, when we had all the upholstery and everything out, we took uh, and had trucks guts out of Florida uh, to make a custom upholstery for it to match the outside. Uh, they inlaid a 32-inch TV screen in the passenger side wall. And then I had uh, Otto King out of McPherson, Kansas there, uh, Dustin and his group of guys up there put a heck of a stereo system in it. It's running all, uh, all Rockford speakers. You got four 10-inch uh, Rockford Fathergate studs against the back wall, uh, two Rockford Fathergate amps hanging from the, from the ceiling, and uh, it'll, uh, it'll definitely wake the neighbors going down the road. Like I said, keeps me, uh, keeps me awake driving late at night when we, when we run into that sort of scenario. Yeah, we got a microwave and a refrigerator in here, uh, just kind of uh, run a domestic fridge in there that uh, was set inside of one of the Iowa Customs cabinets, because yeah, like I said, we run this thing five, six days a week, so I always take, you know, leftovers for supper or, uh, you know, something like that that, you know, it keeps me from stopping at a truck stop all the time, so yeah, we run the, run the domestic fridge and, uh, you know, got a big inverter to run a microwave and everything, that way I can keep rolling down the road and uh, just barely stop eating something up and keep right on it going, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a show truck on the weekends, but it's definitely a working truck any other time of the week, so we, uh, we keep her pretty hooked up, keep, keep her pretty busy. Well, it looks great. Everything in there looks great. Now, what do you do with a truck? And we didn't talk about the type of uh, things that you haul with it. Obviously, you're hooked to a, a hopper bottom there. But uh, I guess uh, start with um, start with a trailer, and then tell me what you do with a truck. Uh, well, this trailer is a 2018 uh, Tim they call it their Super Hopper. Uh, yeah, we run uh, this trailer here. I actually have this trailer. It's brand new uh, right now. We haven't put a load in it. Our first load will be tomorrow. Uh, that we'll load to head back to the, towards the house with. Uh, but yeah, it's a 2018. It's the first empty hopper of 2018 year models to roll out the, the factory door. Uh, Scott there at Garden City at Sanders Trailer Sales they hooked me up with that. I was in there specking out a new trailer and uh, he would ask if I was going to be showing my truck with it and anything like that. And I said, yeah, you know, I was wanted, wanted to be a show trailer. So he uh, hooked me up with getting the, the very first one in 2018 to keep... Uh, you know, keep their name out there and kind of, you know, show off what they had new for 2018. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put it to work tomorrow and uh, get her going. And then other than that, we pull a uh, 2014 Mac uh, liquid fertilizer trailer. And uh, then we pull a lot of uh, propane and butane for Farmers Oil. I don't uh, own that trailer, but uh, they'll hook me up with a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice ride to pull, you know, around there eight months a year. And we'll do some propane and butane work. Uh, with that to keep the truck really moving. Like I said, we do that. Uh, that's our that's our big deal there. And then the liquid fertilizer and the hopper is just kind of uh, fills in the dead spots there in the summer months, spring and summer. Well, it sounds like you stay pretty busy. Yeah, we we'll run this truck, uh, you know, five to six days a week. Typically, we put uh, about four to five thousand miles a week on it. So uh, it's uh, it stays running pretty hard. You know, this the week before the show, we quit just a little bit early to get cleaned up and get down there, and we still ran uh, about three thousand miles for the week before uh, before we headed down to Louisville with it. Well, who's that riding along with you? Uh, that would be my wife, Lauren. Uh, yeah, she doesn't uh, didn't get a ride with me all the time, but yeah, she made the trip out to the truck show with me. So. Uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's the one that uh, keeps all the paperwork and stuff down there at the house usually and uh, owns her own photography business. So, but, yeah, we, uh, we ain't got the pleasure of having her ride with us for the moment. Dan Four, when you go out to work, you said five to six days a week, what region of the U.S. do you run? Uh, we will run mostly the Midwest, you know, being from Southwest Kansas down there, we run a lot of Midwest stuff, but uh, we will run about anywhere, you know, and we uh, go with the butane and everything. It's uh, a lot of uh, I-35 north and south there, and then we'll run uh, quite a ways west, or, you know, about the Rocky Mountains, but uh, as far as north and south goes, we'll run from, uh, you know, Houston, Texas, down in that area, and we'll run all the way up to get Grand, you know, Grand Forks, North Dakota, and, you know, anywhere in between it, but uh, this truck has been, not since I've owned it, but this truck has been in uh, 48 states, you know, we haven't hit them all personally with the truck, but uh, yeah, we'll run, you know, we've run everything but the uh, far west coast and uh, then far northeast of the United States, but uh, we've been about everywhere and anywhere in between. 
Uh, you mentioned uh, all 48 states. The truck must have some miles on it. How many miles you got there? Well, it's got uh, 1.7 million miles as it was setting up the show. We uh, looked before the show to make sure it was, uh, you know, we were telling the folks right down there, but yeah, it's got 1.7 million miles setting there, and uh, I overhauled it. Well, it was overhauled right before I bought it at a million. And uh, like I said, we got that done, bought the truck, and uh, never looked back with it. Ten four. When you go out on a run, how long are you gone for? Typically we're gone, you know, doing the propane and butane is the big big time of the year that we're gone. And, uh, yeah, I'll usually leave on a, you know, Sunday, Monday night, you know, and then you're usually out for your uh, your 70 hours. You might get home, you know, a night or two during the week here and there, but uh, typically we pack enough clothes and enough food that uh, I can be gone for my 70 hours and uh, get back home for a 34, and then you get back out and do it all over again. But, you know, then in the summer months when we're doing the liquid fertilizer and the, uh, and the butane, the little fertilizer, the hopper, I mean, there, we'll, uh, we'll be home sometimes every night out of the week. Sometimes we'll be gone, you know, two, three nights a week, that's like, that type of deal. So uh, it just varies, you know, from, from the different seasons, you know. But, yeah, last year I pulled this hopper and uh, was home every every night at about 4.30 or 5 o'clock. We just did a lot of local grain with it. But uh, if the local grain gets slowed down, we'll, uh, you know, we're gone haul some road salt up into Iowa, Nebraska, you know, in that area, do some dry fertilizer type stuff. And uh, usually when we do that, we'll have to be gone, you know, two or three nights out of the week. But uh, all them places usually close down on a weekend, so we'll at least get back home for the weekend. But, but the butane is... Uh, it's a 24-7 deal, so if uh, you got the hours to be driving, they, uh, they, you know, they usually keep you looked up pretty good. And then uh, you know, go home, get your, get your cars washed and, you know, servicing done on the truck, whatever you need to do there, and then get right back after it again. 10-4. Now, you say we. Is, it, is there more than one truck running along with you? Uh, well, like I said, just me and my brother. We don't uh, don't run together, but that's uh, that's we as far as uh, you know chase trucking goes. It's just uh, uh, us two trucks. But uh, a lot of times you can run you know with a truck. There's uh, usually usually a couple more trucks going where we're going, uh, and like, we run together quite a bit. But uh, a lot of times yeah, it's just you know one truck until you get to a truck stop type deal, or you'll you know might hook up with somebody when you're unloading type deal. Tell me about the operation of the trailer for those uh, that don't know how a hopper bottom works uh, and if there's any technology uh, that goes along with that. Uh, I see some switch panels and whatnot on that thing, so uh, tell me how that works. Well, uh, it's all remote operated. A, a hopper bottom trailer will you know, dump out the bottom there. Uh, and uh, new for the 2018, that they, I think they came out, out, tray out with it in uh, 2017, but uh, it's got remote operated uh, trap doors on it that are uh, hydraulically operated. It's got a remote operated tarp so I can do anything I need to do with that on the, you know, as far as untarping it to uh, load or unload and then uh, opening stuff up, you know, out the bottom to unload. Uh, yeah, it's all one touch operation from in the cab here. Uh, it does have, you know, some switch panels and everything out uh, outside, and if you are standing outside, you can do it, you know, from there too, but if you're just going in and out of some place or whatever, it's all uh, all remote operated from inside the cab here, and uh, yeah, you, you said about the, the shine to it, uh, we had it polished out before the, before the show, you know, going to Louisville, we stopped off in Joplin and had uh, cut above polishing there across the street from four states. Uh, polished all the aluminum on it and uh, did the wheels and everything like that as well. It had a, it had a stainless front and back on it when I ordered it, but uh, we had all the aluminum everywhere polished out on it, so uh, it does shine uh, really nice going down the road now. We, uh, they did a heck of a job down there with it. Now in terms of um, the type of things that you, you'd prefer to haul or have hauled, uh, what is it like to run a hopper bottom? bottom uh, a lot a lot of the things like that I enjoy going into the uh, you know the little co-ops you know little things like that you know I prefer doing that sort of thing I've you know planes where we're from is a real small town you know so I enjoy going into all the little small town farm communities and uh, you know doing the liquid or doing you know the fertilizer for them and uh, you know the grain for them and everything like that but uh, I mean and just like anything else I mean it's got some downfalls uh, the big complaint that I've got about it is it's uh, it's really dirty work. I mean, you're going to be doing a lot of, you know, dirt roads and dust and, you know, things like that. So uh, that's the, 
that's the one complaint that I have, but I mean, it makes it real hard to keep a black truck clean, as you can imagine, and a black trailer, I guess, for that matter. But uh, other than that, like I said, I really enjoy it. I mean, obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't pay as well as I'd like it to, but uh, I mean, that's you can say that about anything, I guess. I mean, I'd, I'd never complain about making more money doing the, doing the same work, but uh, like I said, it uh, keeps the bills paid, and I get to go in and out of all the little, you know, small towns, you know, farming elevators and everything that I haven't been into for a long time. Back when I was in high school, I did a lot of, you know, a lot of farm work and, you know, helped out with local farmers around the area, so I spent a lot of time in those little elevators doing different things, and uh, like I said, now I get to go back in and see a lot of them folks with uh, my own business, my own truck, and uh, like I said, it's uh, real good to go back in them little places and uh, get caught back up with those people again. Now you said uh, running a hopper bottom could be dirty work. So if a guy said uh, to you, well, Colton, I'd like to do what you do and run that hopper bottom because I think it's pretty cool. What are some things if you had to, you know, pretty much if you had to train a guy, you know, I guess to use that mindset, what would you have to tell a guy about running that type of trailer in order to do it uh, efficiently and correctly? Uh, well, it is, uh, like I said, that's what I started pulling, uh, you know, nine years ago when I got started driving a truck. This, when I bought this truck, it actually came with a trailer. I bought a 1999 Wilson trailer with it, and uh, it is relatively easy to learn. Uh, I mean, there's some, you know, ins and outs to it once you, uh, once you get into it. Uh, the big thing that I was told, you know, when I kind of was learning is, you know, be, be sure to make sure that uh, your tarp is open when you go to load or unload, you know, so you don't... Uh, Either load your, your product on top of the tarp, or uh, if you're trying to unload with a tarp, you know, a lot of times you can, you know, that tarp will create a little bit of a vacuum, and when you open up the bottom of that, it'll, uh, you'll suck the tarp in, you know, and end up doing a lot of damage to that tarp and the tarp bows and everything, so that was the biggest thing that I was told, and uh, that I'd probably have to tell, you know, somebody that, yeah, make sure your tarp is uh, open or closed whenever you go to unload, and uh, on the same, uh, same subject of that, make sure that the, the traps are closed when you go to load. I can uh, admit that I uh, have put grain in a trailer before and, and didn't uh, didn't have the trap doors shut all the way on the bottom, and uh, that makes a heck of a mess when you when you go to jump out and tarp your tarp your trailer and half your loads already fell out the bottom. It's uh, pretty embarrassing, and uh, like I said, it's a, kind of a mess to clean up. But uh, like I said, it's nothing nothing that can't be fixed. But that's uh, it's a lot easier if you just make sure. That would be a little embarrassing. Now, with the purpose of a uh, hopper bottom, you know, there's many different types of, you know, ways of getting material out of a trailer. Why was a hopper bottom created, you know, and what's the benefit of, of using this uh, trailer that way? Well, the, uh, the plus side to a hopper bottom, you know, is going into, you know, out there where we're at, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the elevators are, uh, you know, built way back in the day, you know, and they're, uh, was built in the horse and buggy days or the, the small bobtail, you know, little end dump days. And, uh, so now the trailers that are, you know, big and, you know, 43 foot long or longer, you know, like this one, uh, they are, uh, you know, hard to get in and out or hard to maneuver, you know, so when you get into them little elevators, if you had an end dump, you know, or something like that, you don't have the, the room inside them little elevators to uh, get that trailer, you know, all the way up in the air to, uh, to get unloaded. So the hopper bottom, you know, can typically, you know, have a, a lower profile to fit through those doors, and then you can just, you know, it'll just gravity feed out of the bottom of the trailer there and don't have to, don't have to deal with the hydraulics or anything like that to get... Uh, you know, to get that trailer way up in the air, and uh, but a lot of the grain and fertilizer and stuff goes into a uh, goes into an underground auger type, you know, setup. So uh, it'll just gradually fall out of the bottom there, and uh, they can auger it to wherever they need, and you don't have to have that trailer stuck way up in the air to, to accomplish it. All right. Well, that makes perfect sense. So I'll throw a question to you, Lauren. When it comes to being a, a trucker's wife. What are some obstacles that you have uh, been able to overcome? And obviously, there's uh, there's lots of benefits and things, but you know, maybe for someone someone who's uh, new at being a trucker's wife, what helps you along, and what helps the family along there? Oh, I don't know. I mean, when um, a lot of times when I tell people that I'm a trucker's wife, uh, and they always their next question is always, well, how 
how long, how long is Colton gone then? And I tell him, oh, about four to five nights a week, well, three to four nights a week, pretty much all week. And um, they're like, oh man, how do you stay home alone that much? And I just, I don't know, I've, I've, I'm a very independent person and I think Colton and I, like, we've figured it out that um, we, we like our alone time, but we also really cherish the time that we get together. So I, I really believe in that saying that absence makes the heart grow fonder because when he's gone all week, as soon as he gets home on the weekends, I drop work and I just spend my time with him. I'll go help him on the truck and just try to spend every minute that I can with him. And then when he leaves again, that's when I get my work done. So I don't know. I think it works out pretty good for us. And I'm sure not everybody could live the lifestyle that we do, but it's just what we do when we both are living our dreams. And so we're very thankful for that. That is a really great way to explain that. Tell me what it's like to, to clean a, a show truck and what are some of the things that you find yourself being able to compliment Colton on in terms of cleaning. You know, some guys may not be too detailed at some things, some ladies are. So how do you uh, help out in that regard? Oh, I don't know. When it comes to cleaning, I think I'm a little more OCD than Colton. And so I, I feel like I noticed a lot of the little details and uh, probably a lot of things that other people, it probably doesn't matter, but if I know that something on the, like, underside of the trailer is dirty or something, it's going to bug me until I clean it, and so I'll do that, and then as far as getting ready for Louisville and stuff, I helped him on a lot of the little painting details. We painted the Tempty and Plums on the trailer, and um, just kind of touched up some stuff, and so I do that type of work, and, um, I don't know, I'll just kind of get in there and do whatever he needs help with. And as long as I don't get too greasy, I uh, I go along with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's for So you're not underneath their uh, grease and drive lines and whatnot? Is that what you're saying? Exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm still kind of a girly girl, so uh, he definitely will get underneath the truck and also, since he puts those low cowlings on there, I remind him of that every time that he goes to get under the truck and what a task that is to crawl under there, and I'm not about to attempt that, so I just leave that work to him. I'll climb up on top of the truck, though. I know when we were um, shining it all up for Louisville there, I crawled up on and was cleaning the top of the stacks and everything, but I don't mind heights. I just don't like crawling on the ground. Now, speaking of awards and uh, cleaning and the Mid-America Trucking Show, how did you guys do at the show? Well, we did uh, a lot better than we were expecting to. I mean, not to say that we uh, went out there expecting to get beat or anything like that, but uh, we just went out there expecting to have a good time, and uh, which we did. But, uh, yeah, we came home uh, way better than I was planning on. We finished uh, second in the working class uh, combo dump class that they have out there. We finished second in that. Uh, got second in best, uh, best paint uh, in the working class. And then uh, second best in interior in the working class. And then uh, the real pride and joy that really, uh, really surprised me and really made my day there was uh, Peterbilt Motor Company there that walks around. They uh, deemed that this one was the uh, second best Peterbilt in show. So we got uh, got another award for that. And uh, like I said, that one uh, that one really surprised me and really made my day. You know, and uh, in a truck show that uh, out there is primarily Peterbilts and. Uh, very nice Peterbilts at that, you know, for because uh, they lump all the Peterbilts together in that that you know category there as far as how they look at those, and uh, for it, it to be setting you know two trucks down from uh, a brand new Peterbilt that is uh, just as custom, if not more so than this truck, and uh, for them to pick this one, you know, out of the top three Peterbilts in the show, uh, really uh, really meant a lot and uh, really humbled me to uh, you know know that. Uh, I mean, obviously it's my favorite truck because I own it and I, uh, I've done all the work to it, but for, uh, for the people that built the truck, you 
know, 15 years ago or however long, uh, for them to still come around and, uh, and it draw that much attention from them, you know, just really, uh, really meant a lot. Yeah, I imagine it did. I'm sure that that uh, was a big, big moment of, uh, of pride there when uh, they announced your name there for that award and all the other awards. Yes, definitely. That's, uh, yeah, second place uh, in Louisville is uh, definitely something that we are uh, proud of. And uh, especially, you know, when it was uh, just the two of us that, you know, cleaned it up and got it ready and everything out there. You know, we had help, you know, with uh, guys loaning us jacks and stuff to stage tires and everything like that. But, you know, all the, all the cleaning work that went into uh, wiping it all down before the show and everything was, uh, was just me and Lauren there. And uh, like I said, for us to... Uh, for us to go out there and uh, do that after working the truck up to the week before the show and then uh, wiping it down for two days straight and everything to get it parked there and, and then coming away with those kind of awards at a, at a prestigious show like Louisville, you know, that uh, that's something that not everybody uh, gets the opportunity to say and uh, we're very proud of that fact and, uh, you know, just being uh, just being parked on the show lot in Louisville was, uh, was a dream come true of, uh, I know for sure mine, you know, Lauren's not uh, hasn't been into it as long as uh, I have, but uh, it was definitely a dream come true of mine to uh, be able to just say that I had parked in that show and then, like I said, to come away with, uh, with four awards, even though, you know, it was, uh, was second place in all of them. Like I said, that's uh, definitely something that uh, I will, uh, you know, that I'm very proud of and I will not soon uh, forget that for sure. All right, let's talk about being a, an owner-operator. Uh, a lot of guys want to get into a situation uh, like yourself. They want to uh, buy a truck, own a truck, run it, and be successful. What are some things, uh, what are the pros and cons, and what are some things that, that you have to, uh, to overcome? Well, the biggest thing that I've personally had to overcome with it, and uh, Lauren and my mom can definitely uh, can vouch for this, but uh, you've got to uh, hold off on buying the, uh, the fancy things until you uh, definitely have the money for them. Uh, I was really bad about that when I bought this truck. You know, I'd, uh, I'd get a paycheck at the end of the week or whatever, and uh, go, wow, I can put, you know, so much stuff on my truck, you know, and uh, I'd start buying it, well, then the, the problem with that is, you know, then you get down to the end of the month or whatever, and uh, you have that credit card bill, you know, that you put all the fuel on, or, you know, that fuel bill comes due, and uh, if you blew all your money on Chrome uh, the week before, you know, that makes it pretty hard. I mean, I never never completely blew, blew all the money on Chrome, but, you know, I just had to kind of learn that the hard way that, uh, wow, you know, that, uh, yeah, you, you may or may not make a lot of money, but you definitely handle a lot of money, and the amount, you know, the you know, how much you make, but then you also turn around and you spend that right back in, you know, fuel or tires or uh, anything like that, but uh, it's definitely uh, my dream to do this, and uh, I can hopefully, you know, do this my entire life, you know, that's what the, what the plan is anyway, is uh, just to do this as long as I can, and then, uh, you know, hopefully just retire at the end of it and not have to, uh, you know, worry about doing anything else because I couldn't make this work, but uh, you got to set your own hours, you know, I can run uh, run when I want, be home when I want, and uh, everything like that, so it's, uh, it's definitely uh, got its ups and downs for sure, but uh, like I said, I wouldn't have it any other way. I hear you. So what are some steps that a guy would need to go through to uh, to get underway of having his own uh, authority? Oh, well, let's, uh, I've got a, a girl there in, a uh, well, group of girls actually, there in uh, Garden City at TMT Truck Permitting that do, uh, do a lot of the, you know, keeping me permitted and everything like that. But, uh, and I actually, believe it or not, the only reason that I, uh, the only reason I started out to get my own authority was because I was having a hard time getting, uh, getting a, you know, an insurance company to, uh, that would sign me on, you know, these trucks and companies, you know, I started driving when I was 18 and, uh, could only run in state there, you know, hauling local grain is where I got started there and then, uh, bought this truck when I turned 21 and, uh, yeah, I was wanting to, uh, the reason I did that was because I couldn't get anybody, you know, any of the big trucking companies to go, that was going out of state to, uh, they wouldn't put a 21-year-old kid that had no experience on his, uh, on their, on their truck, you know, as a truck driver, so, uh, 
I thought, well, you know, I've got to check on and seeing if I could do my insurance and everything on my own. If I had my own truck, and I could, I mean, you had to pay a little bit more, but uh, that's one thing that those trucking companies did not want to do is, you know, they pay more for a young kid when they could hire the next, you know, adult that walked in the door and uh, not have to pay more for it. So I uh, bit the bullet and bought my own truck there and uh, put my own insurance on it and then went from there. And uh, so I guess everybody, yeah, they... Uh, they keep me all permitted up, and uh, like I said, I would highly recommend calling a company, you know, like that. I mean, they're not the only ones that do that kind of thing, but uh, there's, you know, several different companies around the country that do that sort of thing, and uh, yeah, they keep me all permitted and legal as far as, uh, you know, all my tags and permits that I need for each state and everything, but uh, then we do all our own paperwork, and uh, then they just keep it on file for us in there, but yeah, that would be the, that would be the big thing that I would highly recommend right there would be to, uh, find somebody that can at least help you get started with that, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's one thing to do that when you, when you've been doing it and know what you're doing, but when you're just, uh, just starting out, you know, that's just one less headache, uh, that I wanted to deal with, you know, you know, as far as I didn't want to pull into a way station somewhere and, uh, you then, you know, shut me down or anything like that because my permits weren't up to date or, you know, something like that was, was wrong. So I thought, well, you know, it's, uh, better to just have somebody that knows what they're doing do that, and uh, I still do it to this day, and I, I could probably do it on my own, but like I said, it's, uh, that's a real good group of uh, ladies up there that do an awesome job, so uh, I just continue to let them do it, and I just continue to let Lauren do the paperwork, and I'll just be the, the mechanic when I can, and uh, I've got a really good you know, local shop there when I can't do the mechanic on on my own, and I'll just, uh, I'll just do the driving part. That's the, that's the part I'm good at. <laughs> Colton and Lauren, it's been uh, really great uh, riding along with you guys, getting to know you a little bit. Uh, thank you for sharing what you share, you know, about trucking life and uh, trucking, uh, how it relates to your, your family, your, your uh, relationship there. I, I hope to see you guys soon uh, at another truck show. And, uh, of course, uh, the truck is, is a great looking truck. A lot of people are really going to enjoy seeing that uh, at the shows. Well, thank you for yeah, doing, uh, doing the interview with us and uh, taking the time to yeah, run with us a little bit and uh, yeah, for doing what you do in general and uh, yeah, we'll uh, on several shows that we'll hit you know, throughout the year. We'll be in uh, Wildwood in a month and then uh, there's uh, several more on the calendar that we're going to do. So uh, yeah, there'll be uh, plenty of opportunities where people will come by and see the truck, get to know us a little bit and uh, we'd be happy to, happy to talk to you and happy to show you anything anybody wants to see. Well, you guys be safe and uh, have a good trip, and we'll see you soon. And you too have a safe ride.